Hey, what's going on, guys? Then I have a simple snippets, and in today's video tutorial, which is going to be on core Java programming, we're going to be covering the topic of access modifiers. So, if you've been watching this playlist in the previous couple of videos, we saw inheritance in Java, and we also saw the concept of packages. So, if you have missed that video, I'll link the playlist in the description, and you'll probably see a card on the top right corner. So, make sure you watch those videos. So, with that being said, let's start off with today's topic. So, quickly open up this website. Which is our official website of Simple Snippets? That is Simple Snippets dot tech. In the courses section, go to the Core Java part, and under the Core Java programming, you will see the topic of access modifiers. Just click on it, or what I'll do is I'll drop this link of this entire article in the description so that you can directly go to the article. So what we'll do is we'll first talk a little bit of theory about each access modifier and then jump to the pro programming example. So we'll cover one. Access modifier at a time, both theory and practical examples. So both of the things will be very clear. So make sure you watch this video till the end. And with that being said, let's start off with a little bit of theory. So basically, there are four different access modifiers in Java programming, and we've already seen them in many of the video tutorials in this core Java playlist. But we never actually talked about them extensively. And the reason why I thought of talking about access modifiers explicitly in a much further video in this entire playlist is because I wanted your concept of packages and inheritance to be clear before covering this topic, so then you'll understand this more better because both those concepts also come or overlap in access modifiers concepts. So, anyways, moving ahead, let's start off with the first access modifier that is private. So these are the four access modifiers that is private, default, protected, and public. So starting off with the private access modifier, which is the most restricted one. Here's a little bit of theory. So the private access modifier is accessible only within the class. Period. That's that's the most important line actually, and it is specified using the private keyword. The methods or data members declare private are accessible only within the class. Any other class from same package or any other package will not be able to access these members. Even the child classes in terms of inheritance will also not inherit those data members or member methods. And classes or interfaces can not be declared as private, so that's one exception. So now there is an example over here which you can try it out. But what we'll do is we'll type the program ourselves. So quickly jump to the NetBeans ID. Now as you can see, I've already opened up my NetBeans ID and created a project, so you can go ahead and do that. So what we'll do is inside our public class that is Java application one, we'll create a member variable that is int x. And we'll say it is a private variable. Okay, so if I don't do anything or don't say any of the access modifier over here, it is taken as default access modifier. Right now we are saying it is a private data member. And what we'll do is we'll also create a private method. We'll say private show x. Okay. And I forgot to. Type the return type. It's it's gonna be void because it's not gonna return anything. What we'll do is it will say system dot out dot print ln value of x is, and then just print x. Fair enough. Okay. So what we'll do is in the main function. Now notice that this is our main class that is class Java application one. According to the concept of private access modifier, the private access modifier is only available within the class. Now our main function is also inside this Java application one, right? So this means that these two values should be accessible inside the main function. So let's try to create an object of Java application one. I'll say obj is equal to new Java application one. Now I'll say obj dot x equals to five, and then I'm gonna say obj dot show x. So this should print the value of five, and as you can see, it's not giving us an error. Over here itself, so this means that this syntax is correct, and we are able to access the private members. But just to be confirmed, let's try to run this. And there you go, you can see. Okay, so let me just cut this line. Let me just save this, and um, yeah, there you go. Value of x is five. Cool. Which means that we are able to access the private members because it's in the same class. Now what we'll do is we'll try to create one more class and see. Class A. Let's name it Class A. We'll create these two methods inside Class A, and we'll keep them private. Okay. Now, 
instead of creating an object of java application class we'll create an object of class a now you can see from this code that class a is not inside java application 1 and our main method is inside java application 1 right so since the data member and the member function or member method is private it should not be able to access it right so when i say class a okay a when i say a object is equal to new a that's our class name and uh, opening and closing round brackets so when i instantiate an object and if i say obj.x is equal to 5 you can see immediately it is a it is throwing an error and the error says x has private access in a which means that this is giving us an error again if i say obj dot show x again it will also throw us an error and it will say show x is private access a so this is what private access modifier does it prevents access it restricts access and it is accessible only within the class okay so this was an example for private one so let's move on to the next access modifier that is default access modifier so if you don't use any modifier it is treated as default by default so if you don't type in explicitly any other modifier it is treated as default now what's the difference between default and private so the data members or class or methods which are not declared using any access having default access modifier are accessible only within the same package so this means that it's little bit less restricted compared to private because in private the data members and member functions or member methods that were inside the class were accessible however here it is at a package level so default access modifier works at a package level so let's see how that works let's quickly jump to the netbeans id again okay now what i'm going to do is i'm again going to create a class it's going to be class a again what we'll do is we'll just cut this from java application class and paste it over here and now let's just remove these access modifiers so that it becomes default now notice that class a is outside java application 1 class and which means that our main method is inside java application 1 however class a is inside the same package that is java application 1 now we've already talked about packages in the previous video right so if you don't know what packages are you can visit that video explicitly we've talked a lot about packages in that video so now it is in the same package so let's see if we can create an object and access the data member and member methods so i'll say a obj is equal to new a i'm going to say obj dot x equals to 5 obj dot show x and you can see that it's not throwing us an error which means that this is valid so this is how the default modifier works if i just run this there you go value of x is 5 so this means that default is little bit less restrictive and less strict compared to private access modifier so now let's move ahead with the next access modifier that is the protected access modifier so the protected access modifier is specified using the keyword protected now the pro protected access modifier is accessible within the package and also outside the package but only through inheritance so this is the major difference between protected and the default one so this is again a little bit less restricted compared to default because in default if the class is in different package then we won't be able to access the data members which are default inside that class in other class which has the main method right but if it is protected we can access the data members and member methods if they are declared protected and if inheritance happens in our class so this might sound a little tricky but let's try to see a live example of this so we have an example below but we'll do it or we'll code it ourselves so let's move on to the netbeans id now what we'll do is we'll create a new package over here so on the source packages just right click hit new package say my pack one okay now inside this i'm going to create a java class i'm going to say my class or i'm going to say my super class hit enter and now you can see this is package one or my pack one which we just created in the folder structure you can see this is the package and inside that we have our my super class what we'll do is we'll just copy this entire code in fact cut it and paste it over here so now what we're going to do is we're going to declare these data members 
or instance variables as protected okay and even this method as protected just remove this so now we've created our my super class in the my pack one package now inside our main java application one package we have our class that is java application one which consists the main method so here what we are going to do is we are going to perform inheritance by using the keyword extends so we've already talked about inheritance you can check it out in the previous videos from this playlist so i'm going to say extends and i'm going to extend this my super class which you can see i've added an import statement so if i say over here and if i just erase this and if i just hit control space over here you can see that it gives us an intelligence pop-up which will include that import statement by default okay so what we did here is our java application one is inside this java application one package our super class is in my pack one package and the member methods and the instance variable is de declared as protected so let's see if we can create a java application one object so i'll say java application one obj is equal to new java application one and let's see if this obj has those instance variables as well as the method show x so i'm going to say obj dot x is equal to five and now i'm going to say obj dot show x and you can see there is no error which means our program is working fine let's save this and let's check this so there you go you can see value of x is five so this is how the protected access modifier works and the protected access modifier is accessible in different packages but only via inheritance so that's the only difference between the protected and the default access modifier where in the in default access modifier you cannot access anything outside the package so let's move on and moving ahead to the last access modifier that is public access modifier and as the name suggests this is the least restrictive access modifier and any data member or instance variable or member method declared as a public access modifier is accessible everywhere so classes methods or data members which are declared as public are accessible from everywhere in the program so any other package anywhere through inheritance or in general also it's all accessible so a simple example would be in the my super class if i just say public and if i just change this also as public now which is inside my pack one okay so our my super class is inside our my pack one package and in the java application one we don't even have to do this inheritance over here now i can simply say my super class obj is equal to new my super class i can say obj dot x is equal to six and obj dot show x so this class is in other package however the instance variable and the member method is declared public so it is directly accessible over here using the dot operator and if i run this there you go you can see value of x is six so the public access modifier is the least restricted now you can go through these articles if you want a little bit of theory if you are preparing your exam answers and you can also see some program examples with the corresponding output and here's a very basic understanding using a table and this will give you the entire idea so we have the access modifier over here in the first column and the y represents yes and n represents no so private is accessible within the class and anywhere else it is not accessible hence y n n n n the default is y y n n protected is y y y and n and it is outside package by subclass only right so protected is outside package by subclass only that's why it is a y and public is accessible everywhere so everywhere it's y so yeah this was a little bit about access modifiers you can go through the theory read out this article share this article with your friends if you are preparing your answers and if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and if you haven't yet subscribed make sure you subscribe to this channel if you have any queries put them in the comment section and i'll talk to you guys in the next video tutorial peace